Turkish LGBT activists arrested for defying the ban on pride marches. On June 26th, hundreds of people marched through the streets of Istanbul, Istanbul, Turkey, to demonstrate for the rights of the LGBT community, despite the Turkish government banning the pride parade since 2015. The Turkish authorities attacked and arrested many before the rally even began. On the day of the event, protesters gathered with rainbow flags in the streets around Taksim Square, a location specifically known for being the epicenter of protests against the regime. The crowd raised slogans such as, the future is queer, and we are here, we are queer, we are not going anywhere. The Turkish police arrested 373 participants at the Pride March. According to several eyewitnesses, the police even tried to prevent the press from filming the conflict. Um, Bulent Kilik, a veteran award-winning AFP photojournalist, was arrested at the scene. Amnesty International Turkey campaigner uh, Milena Buyum stated, quote, all those detained solely for their participation in pride must be released immediately and unconditionally. Even though homosexuality has been decriminalized in Turkey since 1858, the LGBT community has faced increasing hostility from religious fundamentalists since the Islamic conservative government led by the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan came into power. So I... You know, as much as I don't love to see people getting arrested and abused by the Turkish police, I do love to see hundreds of people rising up, defying and rejecting the Islamists, the Islamism of Erdogan's government. I love it. This is this is the country that wants to be part of the EU. <laughs> well, like they don't you get guys, the the main criteria for joining the EU is having a fabulous gay pride parade. Okay, you have to have that. You cannot, <laughs> you cannot join the EU. They put that I mean, in the I'm, charter. <laughs> I, I like, I, I don't, I, I don't know why you're like. I, don't, I'm questioning your NATO membership at this point. Okay, like, how could you be a NATO <laughs> member <laughs> and not have a gay pride parade? Like, honestly, this is why you? <laughs> Like, uh, they're not the same. No EU for you. <laughs> um, okay, somebody was saying that this is, I don't know if this is true. Like, this is not specific to gay pride events. I don't know what they mean, but is that something? That well, I need have? to pull up my sources, but the sources that I read said that this was instituted after 2015, after like over 100,000 people showed up at Pride, and that they they just continuous they continually cite just oh security issues security issues without like ever making any effort to improve the security issues like it just seems very convenient to me let me find the yeah. exact source um yeah okay so Istanbul Pride has taken place every year since 20, no, 2003 after the spectacular Pride Parade in Istanbul in 2014. With more than 100,000 participants, the Turkish assured authorities have repeatedly banned the event, officially calling, stating, quote, quote unquote, security reasons. Nevertheless, vast crowds of LGBT supporters gather yearly at the end of Pride Month. Hmm. So I, I know in Turkey, sometimes they use uh, excuses to ban something that they don't like. What do you think is the motivation for this? Do you think like, because Turkey right now really needs its international relationships, especially. Um, so who are they appeasing? Like there's like, what's the demographic that they're trying to appease with like, with actions like this? Um, presumably an older Turkish demographic domestically. Mm. Um, because as much as Erdogan has tried to islamized turkey society put this into the education put this into the social norms in the rules particularly regarding the youth polling shows that the turkish youth are overwhelmingly beginning to reject this islam and public life that he's been trying to institute or even the more like automization auto automanization of turkey at large so it's mm. definitely not to appeal to the younger audience. Presumably, so we just it's need, appealed, we just appealed to older, older generations. People. 
We just need older people in Turkey to just, I don't know how to say this without YouTube getting, YouTube might think I'm saying something that I'm not, okay? Oh. Just maybe like, just get older faster so that what happens when you get old happens, okay? So that you can get replaced by younger people faster, okay? So I think that will save Turkey. What do you think? We just need to wait for um, young people to I get think old. that it's way too simplistic to say, oh, we just need to wait for an older generation to go away. Oh, we have to yeah. pause, stop everything because Poochie is here. Look at the puppy. No, it's fine. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> um, continue. I think it, it, you just take everything for granted when you just say, oh, you know, it, just wait for the older generation to go away. It's way too simplistic. Like, it just makes it seem like it's just a matter of time when we actively need to fight for these things, like tooth and nail the whole time, because it things can go backwards and younger generations can actually take on the attitudes of these older generations whose attitudes we don't appreciate. Like, we can see now that over previous generations in America, homophobia was dropping starkly. And then suddenly with Gen Z, the youngest generation, we see homophobia rising again. Like, why is that? What's going on? There's a lot of debate about why that could happen. But the point is, you can't take mm. it for granted that each following generation is going to be more progressive. You need to actually push Do to something. make sure to ensure that that's the case. <laughs> I love to see the... <laughs> I love to see the live chat just completely like stop what we're talking about. We're talking about the dog now. <laughs> yeah, doorknob Vincent. Why is Susanna even still talking? There's a puppy here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry for Honestly, the distraction. Point taken. <laughs> I see I see how right. it is. I I get it. <laughs> <laughs> We should have a, when we have tragic news, we just should have a puppy moment just so that we could like help people get over the tragedy that you discovered. Like, okay, that tragic news is over. Here's puppy time. We should have puppy time. Actually, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Like I'm in, in complete favor of that. <laughs> Gossip is saying <laughs> the puppy stole your thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I lost my own train of thought. <laughs> Okay. Ooh, okay, well, if that's the case, we need Poochie to be available for the next news because the next news is also Poochie. very upsetting. Okay, we'll see. Um, okay, if she comes back, we'll have her back on. Okay, so ca we can't clap, I'm assuming. No, 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 definitely not. Okay. Wait, before we go, Storm is asking, do you, does Susanna have a pet? No, I'm not allowed to have pets in my apartment. Okay, maybe later when you move one day. Then we can show at the same time. I'll bring, I'll bring my puppy. You bring your puppy. And we share. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So no clapping. And, and they what? will be puppies together. <laughs> <laughs> it will be so great. <laughs> Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.